This week, we're taking a break from the Conquest Champions League and just playing a regular old game. It's Jim's incredibly painted Easterlings going up against my very colourful Isengard army. These were the two army lists that we were planning on taking to the Australian Masters Tournament before, unfortunately, it was cancelled due to world events. But it means that we have 750 points of two truly competitive armies going head to head to see which one is going to come out on top. My master's army is Saruman with a horde of Urukai, mainly pikes and crossbows. I also have Shaku, who's leading a couple berserkers with a few more crossbows. I've got a drummer in my list to make sure my list can move nice and fast, and I've got a captain who's leading the all important demo team. I've also got Grima Wormtongue to round out my list. It should be super competitive, so we'll see how it goes. Hey guys, I'm Jim. I'm running an Easterlings army today against Jacob. I've got Umduer on an armored horse with some cataphracts and a war drum and a pike phalanx. Then I've got a war priest and a few more lads in a phalanx. And then I've got a captain with bow and he's got a few bowmen with him. And then I've got a Karnish king on chariot who's kind of like proxying as an Easterling king. I've like converted him that way. So yeah, feeling pretty confident. I reckon I'm gonna take Jacob down, to be honest. Saruman is the key unit in my army. He's a super powerful magic caster. Every time he gets to cast a spell, he can re-roll one of them if he fails, so he's very consistent. I'm gonna be using Saruman to mess with Jim's heroes and hopefully knock them off their horses. Grima is a key unit in my army. Every time an enemy calls a heroic action within six inches of them, it costs them two might instead of just one. So he's great at draining enemy resources. I'm worried about um the Isengard bombs, uh, demolition charges. So I think I'm just gonna try, try my best to avoid that, mitigate Grima, um, and I don't know, just try to, you know, maybe hammer an anvil with the phalanx and then get the cab around the back, something like that. Our battle sector today is the plains of Mordor. Do it, man. So three random scenarios were generated. They were reconnoiter, Heirlooms of Ages Past and To the Death. Now Jim and I are each going to roll and whoever rolls the highest gets to veto one of these scenarios first which is going to leave us just with the one we're going to play. I'm on a 1, Jim's on a 5, so Jim, which scenario would you like to veto? I'm going to veto To the Death. Alright, I'm going to veto Heirlooms of Ages Past. So that means we're playing Reconnoiter. Reconnoiter. The objective of Reconnoiter is to get off the enemy's board edge. On the first turn that you... The objective of Reconnoiter is to get off the enemy's board edge. Instead of deploying normally, each player rolls a dice for their warband and on a 4-up they move on from their table edge. This means that sometimes the armies won't come in for a couple turns. First turn priority went to Isengard, so I get to roll for my first warband. I'm going to start with the big one, which is Saruman. He's got a 4, so he has arrived. It's always good to get your big warband down first, and it's just going straight up to Guts, dead center of the board. Saruman's such a key unit, I'm just glad he's on the table. My next warband I'm rolling for is Shaku with some Berserkers. He's got a 3, so he hasn't arrived this turn. The Urukai Drummer is an independent hero, so he's all by himself, and with a roll of a 3, he also does not arrive this turn. And finally, I've got my Captain with the Demolition Charge, scoring a 1, so I've only got one warband in on turn 1. I'm going to roll for Amdua first. Oh, not what I wanted to see. On a two. Not a good start from Amda. No, it's really not. <laughs> Hopefully it reflects the rest of the match. Um, Alright, gonna do the king on Jared. Oh, Solid start. Alright, the bowman. Six, That's they six. arrive. Ooh, beautiful. Jim's bowmen are just going relatively close to the center. Now I gotta give massive props to Jim. Easterling bowmen are not something that you see that often. People often leave them out just to get more pikes in. But these models look so cool, so I'm glad to see them on the table. So the War Priest also gets a 1, meaning he's not coming in this turn. The board is a bit sparse with just one warband from each side getting in, but it gives me an advantage so I can start marching across the board. Priority turn 2 went to the Easterlings. Jim, what are you thinking while you're moving your models? I'm thinking I really want my other lads to come in right now. <laughs> that is fair enough. I'm gonna roll for Umdur. And a three, he will oh. arrive because he gets the plus one for not arriving last turn. Very good news. 
So, dead center of the board, what's the thinking there? <sighs> there was no real thinking, man. I just put it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Yeah. I really hope Jim is telling the truth about not having a plan here because I'm going to need everything I can get to beat him and take him down. And this is just Amdur's warband coming in behind him, but it's just a good opportunity to look at these nice models. For the Easterling Warpriest. Six, yes. he makes it in. The Warpriest can be played in two ways. He can either go for Fury, which boosts the troops, or Blade Wrath, which boosts the heroes. I'm not sure which way Jim's gonna go. Rolling for my boy, the king. Yes. Five, he also comes in. All right, so that's all of Jim's army in. And where's he ending up? Um, That's a very good question, man. Look, I think I'm gonna pop him down here. And we'll just see how that goes, you know? All right, goes on his 10. In my movement phase, Saruman is just gonna move 10 inches straight forwards. And that puts him within 18 inches of arm dirt. So I'm going to cast Command just on one dice. And I get it on a four. So that'll allow me to move arm dirt up to half his move. Jim, you going to resist that? Oh, that's a very good question. So I'm thinking you might try and move me back. Um, I'm wondering if his cab base can actually fit through. That's a good question. Do you Which, want to check for me? If that's not the case, then yeah, we can always redo that. But yeah, I think I'm moving the bases there. Yeah. Interesting. I think I'll... I mean, I'm still going with the command. Are you going to resist or not worry about it? Um, I'm going to not worry about it. All right. I'm just going to have you move him across five inches so he's closer to those arches. Yep. No problem. My thinking here is I had the will point for free, so why not? I just want to harass Jim. And with Saruman's failure, the rest of my army that's on the board is just pushing forwards. Now I can roll for my reinforcements. I want to see if Shaku and his warband come in. On the roll of five, they make it. Shaku and his warband are going wide on one of the flanks. It's going to hopefully put the pressure on uh, if they can threaten getting off the board at some point. Next warband that I'm rolling for is my drummer. On a one, he doesn't make it. That's brutal. I really need that extra speed. And finally, my captain with the demo charge gets a four, so he'll be coming in. And the captain with the demo team is just coming in behind my other warband so that I can stay together. Mm -hmm. Turn three priority went to Isengard, meaning I get to go first. And Saruman has armed her in his sights. Saruman just needs to move forwards three inches to be within 12 inches of Armdor, and then I can cast a Sorceress Blast against him. So I'm using one dice from my store and one free one. This goes off on a four up. It's not great. Saruman has a special rule, Lord of the Astari, meaning I can re-roll one of these, and that re-rolls into a one, so that's done nothing for me this turn. So Saruman is just gonna move backwards. And the rest of the army is just pushing forwards. We're going full speed, not worried about stopping to shoot at this point. Mm -hmm. And Grima is staying safe back there. My flanking force is just going to keep running forwards, but sticking to the edge of the board. Finally, does my lone drummer come in? On a two, he does because he gets plus two because we're on turn three. He's just going to come in behind my army. So this turn, my drummer has sounded the drum. So that means that all my warriors within 12 inches, or anyone with the Eastland keyword, is going to add three to their movement if they're infantry, five if they're cavalry. So that's got everyone in range, besides Carnage King, of course. So I'm going to move these guys up full nine inches. Good, love that. Getting close to the middle of the board. Yeah, that gap is closing quickly. We we'll like to see in 15 inches. I'm just massive 15 inch move here. It'd be really good if I could get him in charge range for next turn. So that's what I'm gonna try and map out. 
Okay, good. I'm the in charge range of my Rakai, but I can't charge him. And then Kaj King can only move 10. Jim's played it really cleverly with Amdo. He's in a position where he's going to be safe this turn, but he's going to be able to charge me next turn even if I win priority. And Jim's just pushing up the rest of the Cataphracts, and that Kandish King is going in the center, and he's going to be able to put out a lot of damage if he runs into my troops. But if he's going into the center, those rocks might get in his way, so I'm actually okay with that. What they're going to do, so I'm just going to move him straight up the middle, and they could peel out that way or that way, just give myself some options for now. Get them that full nine inches, which is good. I'm gonna move them up this way. Get behind the arches there. And after turn three movement, this is what the board's looking like. The gap is closing, and those Easterlings are able to spread out a lot more than the Urukai because they outnumber me by quite a bit. That takes us into shooting. Jim, you got any? I do. So I've got a 12 shots. One's a captain. And Jim's. Shooting, took down one crossbowman. So, turn four priority went to the Easterlings. And, Jim, what did you do with your drum? I drummed. I, I banged that thing. Yep, so that means you can't charge me. So, Amdu, who's set up, isn't going into combat. I think that's the right call. I also declared that I'm drumming, so it's giving me an extra three inch movement. And I've declared a march with my captain meaning that all of my troops in this section are going to be moving 12 inches this turn. I really just need to get across the board to get those BPs. All right, that's your move, Jim. All right. So, Jim's starting with these troops that are outside the drum range. Jim, what are you thinking here? Just blocking off this section? Yeah, I just want to get the Pike Phalanx nice and strong here in case you just decide to rock up on my doorstep here. Yeah, which is looking pretty likely with my 12 inch move this turn. So I want to use the terrain to my advantage. Um, make those choke points seem as I've got. Well, I guess we both got Pike, so it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, and we both got the fight four, so it's going to be uh, one Pike wall versus another. Yeah, however, you will have the uh, strength defense advantage. My defense is five. I do not have a single shield in my army. Really? So Jim pulling the cavalry back. He marked out a bubble of where I could get to. And he's just trying to get away from the section that I'm going to be able to control. What's your thinking with where you're placing Amda? Um... I mean, we'll see how it goes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Eight... Um... Oh, we should go nine. Nine, so three will be twelve, and two and one is fifteen. Unfortunately, I don't think that Shaku can take on Amda and two Black Dragon Knights by himself, or Black Dragon Cataphracts by himself, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Jim thought long and hard about this move with the Chariot King, going through the terrain instead of around. Two and a half. So the chariot can only pivot 45 degrees for every two and a half inches that it moves, meaning that they're not particularly mobile. So next turn I'll have to turn around if he wants to be able to get any of my troops. Now Jim isn't pushing up as far as I was expecting here. Because the objective is to get off the other side of the board, I'm glad that I'm going to be able to get on his side of the board before he gets on mine. Middle Earth is a movement game, and with Jim's move, I'm definitely stumped. He's got these guys that have gone out wide, but the bulk of his force in the middle. I think I'm just going to have to run forwards with everything into this area here so I have an answer for Armda. With my move, my captain had to go first because he called the heroic march, and then his call with me has given all of the troops that extra bit of movement. And as you can see, we are moving a long way. 12 inch move from troops is crazy. And that's me on the other side of the board. That is absolutely perfect. And I'm just pushing up half of my force on this side. And next turn, if I win priority, I want to be able to tie up the Chariot King so that he can't move into a position where he can hurt me much. 
And again, after a lot of thought, Saruman's just pushing up to this position. Fuck me. <laughs> a lot of thought, Saruman's taking a nap. <laughs> Here we go again. After a lot of thought, Saruman is pushing up to this position, and he's going to go with a Sorceress Blast against Armdor. I really want to knock him off his horse. So, using one dice from my store and a free one. It's not a good roll. I can reroll one for Lord of the Astari. And a three is not enough. I don't think it's worth the might point because he can still resist it. So that's another painful turn of failing my spells. Mm. And on this flank of the board, I'm worried because Armda is just looking down Shaku and a couple worries. So Shaku is just adjusting his position. Same with those Berserkers. And those two crossbows are actually going to take shots this turn. So that's my move. Everything's pushed into the middle. And Jim, that's your shooting. What do you got for me? Not much. He's not coming to this area, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so, most of my guys covered. I've got one shot here, which can find a gap. Yep. Oh, this crossbow. Cool. So, I'm going to take that. Alright, let's see it. It's a four. No. No. Then the only other shot that I think I'm going to have is one, two, three, four, but with an in the way on that crossbowman. Yep. Through here. So one's a captain, so he'll be red. Uh, captain hits. In the way. In the way. Gets passed. Gets passed and a six to do it. No. Not enough. All right. That takes us to my shooting. Mm -hmm. So. Two crossbows going at Armdur. I'm just trying to get him off that horse. One hit. That's all we need. Uh, horse or rider? Ooh. Hits the horse. Oh, Here oh. we go. Need a five to take him off. A one. Not good enough. Priority went to the Easterlings again. Again, this was a super interesting point of the game. We both declared that we are drumming. So. I've got one Urukai out there who could charge, but everyone else is just getting the extra three inch movement. And it's Jim's move. So Jim, what are you thinking here? Hmm. Um, look, I really want to get my chariot in a good position and it's a little bit hard because I don't know where you're going to move. Um, so I suppose I'm just going to start with the obvious. And basically I think seeing as you've drummed, I kind of want to hold you in this position here, so I'm going to pin these guys up. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to uh, come through here, enter the middle guy's control zone. In fact, I might as well just charge both. Yeah. Let's do that. So you won't be able to fit through there, which is nice. And then I'm going to get. Two pikes. <sighs> um, so these guys are going to be moving nine inches. Is that right? Nine inches, that's correct. So the Eastling pike block is moving forward, it's just advancing the line. Chariot's moving. Um, it ending up. And funnily enough, he's gonna just move. Then just pivot a little bit more. And I'm just gonna stay put there. Alright. Interesting. Not what I was expecting, but I think it makes sense. It's gotta be the clear move. Otherwise these Urukai can just run out and get to you. Mm. The Eastling Archer is coming across. The Eastling is on this side. Rather than charging forwards, he just made a thin wall. Hopefully stop the Urukai Horde. So, I really want to charge these Berserkers next turn. Get onto this infantry. Um, and these pikes, uh, pardon me, these crossbows are really worrying me. So, I'm just going to get up in Jacob's grill here. Keep out of six inches. Um... You're not worried about Shaku charging you? 
I am, man, but I'm not worried about him charging Armduar. I'm worried about my cataphracts. Jaku can move 10. Do I want to risk cataphracts getting killed? I really don't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move them here. Make sure you can't get around my control zone there. So, yeah, he's not gonna be able to reach me there. But next turn, I'll be able to charge. So I'm um, gonna just keep him safe. That's right. Nice. And this is the board after the Easterling movement. Middle Earth is all about movement and this game has been a challenge of movement. It's my move and Shaku is here with Armdur. Now Shaku is just like a random orc captain who rides a wag, and Armdur is like the Lord Commander of the Easterlings. So uh, yeah, no, I'm totally not charging. I'm just gonna stand there <laughs> and my berserkers are gonna run in and next turn, I reckon we'll, we'll get the charge off on him. Mm -hmm. Alright, my next move is with Saruman. He's going to cast a Sorceress Blast again, but this time it's not going to be against Armdur, it's against these Cav. If I get this off successfully, it'll knock all three of them prone. So I'm using one free one and one from my store again. And I get it on a four, that's so nice. good. I've failed that twice now, and I'm down to three in my store, but that'll knock all of them down. So the initial guy will take a Strength 5 hit, and he is alive, and then the other two will take two Strength 3 hits, one of them will die. I should have rolled for the drum, sorry. Oh, that's alright. Um, um, I'm gonna take the drum. I really don't mind. Uh, one, two, three, it's the drum. Four, five, yep. six, it's the other guy. So it's the other guy? Other guy. Uh, and then the two survivors, they both get knocked flying. So okay. they take another strength. Three, so the drum uh, is a five. It does... They all have shields. All have shields, alright. And then the other guy is just a one. So, killed one of them and knocked two of them knocked prone. Knocked two prone. This big group of Urukai are affected by the drums, so they can't charge this turn. Which means, I'm just going to go for the objective, and I'm going to get these guys in a position where hopefully they'll be able to get off the board. Because of the drum, I think I'm going to be able to get my demo team in range of that Kandish King. So, everyone else just needs to get out of the way pretty much. <laughs> Alright, so, the models carrying the bomb move simultaneously, and with our 9 inch move we're going to be able to get it, he can go into there, mm -hmm. and then they will place the bomb on the inside, because it's not a model it can be in your control zone. No worries. And goodbye to that berserker. <laughs> So in the shooting phase, that Karnish King has a bow. He needs to kill that Urukai Berserker. Yeah. All right. I do. Let's see what you can do. Okay. So I did move. So I s hit a five. No. <sighs> it's a miss. So he was trying to kill that Berserker, so I couldn't detonate the bomb. But I've got a good chance. Now my shooting, I've yep. got two crossbows here. We're firing at Armda again. Needing fours. One hit, one miss. That's fine. I'll take that. Horse a rider. It's the rider this time, and two, not enough. So, start of the combat phase, the <laughs> bomb needs to go. So to get the bomb off, I need to roll a courage test for whoever's trying to detonate it, which is the berserker. The courage seven, so he passes. Now we've got a flaming brand, so I have to roll on the detonation table. On a one, this is a dud. On a two through five, everything within two inches of it is gonna take D6 wounds on a six. It's 2d6 wounds. It's a 5. Ooh. So, d6 wounds, so I roll oh, one this dice. Is a big roll. I need at least a 3 here. It's a 5. Dead. So, that is the Kindish King detonated. Gone. And same with all other models within 2 inches. I think that's just one other Easterling there. Maybe okay. two. I'll give you the measuring tape. So is it of the detonator? Of the de of the bomb itself. Of the bomb itself. I'm gonna say you got two there, my man. Two, are all right. They're just instantly removed. Boom. Um, now my siege crew member is instantly removed, but berserkers have a special rule. 
where every time they take a wound on a six, they ignore that wound. He's just taken five wounds. If I can get five sixes, he's alive, and he is most certainly, most certainly dead. So, detonated the carnage. There we go. And that is how you trade 82 points for 130 points. And we have one fight for this turn. I've got a bunch of guys versus some Easterlings. Ooh, I'm on five high. Six. You're on a six. I'll take a banner reroll. Yeah. And I'll get Oof. pushed back. Ouch. Can you kill me? We will see. White stabbed. No. Nothing. Priority on the next turn went to me playing my eyes in guard. And I've called the drum. I've also called a march with my captain. So my goal here is just to run off the board edge and not even fight those Easterlings. Alright, so these two models need to move before the march because they weren't in range. They're gonna go nine inches towards that board edge and then the captain has to move next he can go 12 inches and that'll end him just here and the rest of the urukai are going 12 inches they'll be able to make it off the edge of the board next turn It's Saruman's move next, and he's just going to chuck a one dice and mobilize on the Easterling Captain. I've got it on a six. Finally, some luck with Saruman's casting. Jim, you going to try to resist that? I do want to get Mike down that way. Um, I want to be able to move in this turn. So I'm going to try to resist with my one point of will. Yeah, I think you need to. No. That is a two, so you can't even mite it to pass. So Saruman ended his move just where he couldn't be charged this turn, or hopefully next turn. He'll be able to spend my next turn to keep himself safe. Against Kamul, I'm going to charge in first with the Urukai Berserkers, and then Shaku is actually just going to go around him and go for the two Eastling Warriors that are prone. And in the last section of the board, I can't charge any of the guys who are in charging range, so I'm just going to make sure I can't get hit by the Easterlings this turn, but when they eventually start coming through here, I'll be able to slow them down. And these models in here are just coming back to hold this gap. Because I've got a squad of Urukai that might get off the board, that means that my goal for the rest of my army is just to stop Jim from getting off the board. And this is the completed Isengard movement. It's going to be a very interesting move phase from Jim coming up, seeing how he's going to try to stop my breakaway group here. <laughs> so Jim, that goes to your move. Uh, does your captain have any might left? He does not. He's called two marches. Uh, That's pretty critical. So this black dragon is just going to try to stop this guy getting off the board next turn. So, so he's the one, the only model that could get off the board next turn. So I'm going to charge... I'm just going to charge the one. Yeah, just go for the one-on-one, -on -one. makes sense. Yeah. Um, that guy's not there. <laughs> he was just a control zone <laughs> measure. What a sneaky tactic. Yeah. Just add models to the board, I love it. Um, Alright, so there's a drummer there. Yeah, look, the drummer's not the best guy to, to fight in combat, so um, I understand going for him. He's man of the match so far for me. Or oh, maybe the demo charges. Yeah, Demo Charge is definitely man of the match, but drama's pretty good. Yeah, I think Demo Charge killed most hours painting, so yeah. that's that's what I'm going for. Look, it'd be bloody fantastic if I could kill that drama. Let's face it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna charge into him. Uh we'll chuck a pike there. Hell, we'll chuck another pike. Makes sense, go for it. He's immobilized. So Jim's just moving a lot of his archers half so they can still get shots off at me next turn and hopefully thin the ranks there. Which makes sense because your archers aren't going to be able to run there in time so they may as well try to shoot me out. Half there. However, the war priest... Um, I'm moving there with him. It's a 
Tough choice because he's the one point of might you've got left. Yeah. Or you've got two yeah. on the captain and three on Armdur, but the captain's immobilized. He's the one point of might you can get in a helpful spot. So I'm moving there with the War Priest. Look, why not? He's got will. I really want to kill the drummer because I don't want those guys to get off the table. Yeah, it makes sense. So I'm going to cast a Blade Wrath, just one dice on that pikeman. <laughs> All right, on the Black Dragon. Cast him two. Gets off. So he's a strength. Five pikemen? You'll be strength six now. Strength six pikemen. All right, nice. Yeah. Final part of Jim's move was just pushing forwards the block of Easterlings on the other side of the board. Things are looking interesting. These armies are very spread out as we go into the shooting phase. So, Jim, what do you got for me? All right, I got some army here. I'm just going to try to thin these ranks. So, I'm going to shoot um, these two that have moved half at this lad here. Yep. Fives, no hits. The next two that haven't moved half will go just at the same guy. They haven't killed him. Got nine. Yep. One hit and six. Six. No. Not enough. Um. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five shots here. Um. This guy's going to be in the way, so. Um, we'll go here, prioritizing him, followed by those two. All right. Five shots. That's three hits. Three hits. It's decent. And see some sixes. One six. One six. All right. Take me out. So be that pirate. Cool. So combat phase. Jim, you calling anything? I'm calling a heroic combat with Amdua. That's risky, but I I see it. I'm countering by doing a heroic combat with Sharku because he's fighting prone guys and I've got the charge. So hopefully I can kill them and run away from Armdur. Hopefully Armdur just fails this. Uh, let's see the roll off, see who goes first. Sweet. Um, who's evil? Uh, I was going more evil. Ah, uh, that's yeah. true. All right. 456 goes to you. Goes Sweet. to you. All right. Armdur fighting two berserkers. So they each have two attacks. I'm on a six, you're on a six, on a goes six. to you on fight value. I'm defense five. So. So I need fives against you. Need fives, that's correct. That's two wounds, but it's not final. Mm. Because I've got my Berserker Fury saves. True, true. On the uh, roll of a six, they will survive this. So, I just need one six. No, oh, not enough. Yes. Ah, that's terrible. So Amdo takes down my two berserkers and he's free to move and charge again. Where All are you right. going? I am going to charge into Sharku. That might be all she wrote for Sharku. All right. Uh, well, that's my heroic combat, so let's do that one next. Uh, you've now countercharged me, so I lose my charge bonus, meaning I've only got two attacks. All right, so... I've got three with Armdua, and then two with the guys on the ground who are throwing. That's correct. I am on a three high to your five. Nice. All right. So even if I spend my last two might, I can't win it. So it's your turn to strike blows. Okay. Um, I do apologize because I was meant to go two-handed in this instance. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Do you mind? I don't mind. That's fine. I think it makes sense anyway, because you've got so much might and a 5A, yeah. so it's what you do, yeah. Um, Alright, so what's his defense? So, I'm just two-handing against my defense of six. Okay. So... So, I'm just needs fours to wound. Alright, we'll go to the first attack on him. So, so that's wound. one wound and one fail. Now, every time you fail to wound Shaku, he can do a strength four hit back at you. Oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> so, Shaku taking a strength four hit against that horse. A four, and Shaku will spend a point of might to kill Amdo's horse. <laughs> very good. So, it doesn't affect the rest of your strikes, but right. I've killed your horse. Yeah, very nice. Um, okay. And second attack on him. Fails to Fails. wound. Uh, so, I'll leave that. So, I'll take two more strength four hits at yep. Amdo himself. Uh, what's your defense value? Defense 6. So that's one wound. Jeez. Oh, I could use another point of might. I'm going to use another point of might. So Shaku's out of might, and I've just done two wounds to Amdur. Alright, sweet. Should I take my fate now or at the end? 
Uh, you take it now if you're gonna use it. Uh, Unless I'm, you want to save it. I... No, I'll save it. So I'll take two wounds then. Alright. So it'll be down to one wound. And your Still final strike against line. Shaku. Alright, so my final, final strike. Does two wounds. Okay, he's got one fate. He's got one fate. So you've done three wounds in total? Three in total, have I? Uh, you did one oh, on yeah, the first strike, yeah. and then you've done two more there. So, so Shaku is dead. He's dead, alright. So I get a point of my pack for Blood and Glory. That's correct. But I am dismounted. Dismounted and have taken two wounds. So Shaku. Shaku is a landmine. Our next fight is the Eastling fighting against my Pikeman. This one's actually a very important fight. Yeah. I'm fight four, he's fight four, I'm on a four. Oh! I'm on a three. Alright. Striking to kill him. A five will take him down. Will. Strength four versus defense six. Damn, wow, that wanted. was a really important one. Mm. Alright, next let's go to that drummer fighting right. your super strong Eastling Pikeman. I yeah, just want to win so this. I'm going to stab with the front guy. Yep. Yeah. I'll do three there. Yeah, alright, so that's a white. And then the strength six guy's going to be his big die. Yep. Yeah. So you got six. That'll go to you. I've got no banners in range. Alright, so strength six guy, what's his defense? Defense of five. Alright, so this will need fours. White reels ones. Both these need fives. Yep. Yeah. Two Fives. wounds. All right, so he Does is. He he's got one fate, but that's not enough to All save right. him because he's dead. That's good. And our last combat for the game looks like we've got four Urukai going up against three Easterlings. Right. And I'm on a five. Five as well. I'll take a banner reroll and a three. So it's drawn fight. You want to do the roll off for me? Yep. So one, two, three goes to me. And that's a six for the Easterlings. Alright. Alright, can you put the wound out? I'm up against two. So... Two wounds. Two wounds. Ouch. Drops down to Uruka. Takes us into priority for next turn, but I'm going to declare that I'm using the Palantir so that I automatically win priority this mm -hmm. turn. Jim, what are you going to do about that? Uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to call a heroic move with Amdur. Yep. And I'm also going to call a heroic move with this shaman. Alright, I'm going to call one with Saruman. Uh, so, let's do the roll off. One, two, three goes to me. Go and a you. one goes to me. That's perfect. So Saruman is going to go first. So, Saruman's moving first. He's going to use a mobilize against the Easterling War Priest. I'm going to use two from my store and my free one, so I have one left in my store, and I'm rolling three dice for this. I've got a four high, and I'm going to re-roll my lowest one to try to get a high one using the Lord of the Astari rule, and a three, so just a four high. Oh, the War Priest has two will points left. All right. I'm not going to use any might, so see if you can resist me. Okay, I'm not going to take any chances, so I'm going to use both my will. Yeah. Four. Four will do it. So you do resist it, but you're out of will. So now yep. I've got to move with Saruman. So Saruman needs to move first, and he's going to end up just there, so that Grima can charge into Amda. Now he also had the or okay, Captain in range, who has to stay within six, which is a bit annoying. So he'll just move to the edge of his range. Right. To there. Alright. That goes to Jim's move. Jim's heroic move with the War Priest. So War Priest just advancing. Yep. And these guys. So this guy, I'm going to try and get him as far as possible. So uh, charge him. I don't think I'm going to have the range to get into the other one though. There's four to there. But... Two going around. <sighs> if we just measure this out. Two, so you're not going yeah, to be so able to... Yeah, so I don't have the range to charge another one. Yeah. That's totally fair enough. Did I just take me out of my dead pile? I think I did. 
spawns two <laughs> new spawns Easterlings. Two new, yeah, it's a good tactic. So the Easterlings have engaged as many of the Urukai as possible, and now the rest of those archers are just pushing forwards because they have to end within six of the War Priest if they want to move. So the Easterlings have all just pushed forwards, meaning that it's my normal move. Now I have three Urukai here, and they could stay and fight with their friends, but I'm playing the objective here, and they're going for it. So this first guy's moving off, and this next guy isn't in range. So I'm just going to send it towards the corner with both of them. I've got one more loss, so I'm in the lead points-wise, now I just need to maintain it. In the regular movement phase over here, the Urukai just jumped in, trying to get as many optimal combats as possible and dealing with the Black Dragons there. Now, Jim, you still had, looks like, a couple pikes here to move. Did you want to move them around, or are you happy where they are? Um, that's a good question. So, yeah, I think I'm going to... I'm going to move... Uh, so, I, I kind of want a Black Dragon there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this pike over to there. We'll see how that goes. All right, I'll cool. Leave it there. Yep. And now my two Urukai crossbows have stood still and Grima is fighting Ando. I realized that was actually a big tactical blunder because Ando will get a point of might back if he kills Grima because Grima is a hero from those blood and glory rules. So, shooting phase. Jim, do you have any shots? Um, yes, I do. I have four shots. All right. They've all moved half. All four of them are going to be shooting down these two. That's a big deal. Hitting on fives. Two hits. And you need sixes. Sixes to kill, come on. Nothing. No, nothing. All right. Now, my two crossbows are going to fight into the combat with Amda. I'm trying to kill Grima when I'm done here. No hits, though. Mm. That's unfortunate. All right, that goes into combat. Just the big guys. The combat phase starts with Grima fighting Amda. Now, Amda would have loved to call a heroic combat here, but... <laughs> Grima Wormtongue means that he can't because he has to use two points of might to do that and he's only got one left. So Grima is going to try to hold his ground. I'm on a two. No. You get it on a six. six. Goes to you. Do you kill Grima? Alright, so I'll do Amdur's attacks. No surprise. Grima's yeah. dead and Amdur is up to two might points. Beautiful. So in this area, it was surprisingly uneventful. I had an Urukai get pushed back and then I had another Urukai lose a fight and get pushed back, but manage to survive it still. Mm. They kill one Easterling. One Easterling there. One Easterling from there. Won this fight, two Easterlings got pushed back, and then one more Urukai got pushed back. Very uneventful, very mm. surprising. So back here, we had two Easterlings fighting two Urukai. The Easterlings won, and they just pushed back my Urukai. You wanna move them back for me? Uh, so I got trapped. Uh, he might be. If he doesn't get out, he is trapped, and you can roll another dice against him. Alright, I'll direct another dice at him. No. No. So. He's alive. And then we had the crossbow there fighting against an Easterling and just pushed the Easterling back. And then my captain unsurprisingly killed an Easterling. Very well done. And we'll finish off with a 1v1. We've got an archer versus a pikeman. Let's see who comes out on top. I'm on a three. A six. Goes to you. Kill me on a five. Come on. Yes. Gets it. So that's one less Urukai on the board. One for one. I'll take that. And that is the end of the turn. So priority this turn was a draw, which means that it goes to the Easterlings. Not what I wanted. I called a heroic move with Saruman, but he can only get the Urukai captain in his range. So he's not actually gonna... Oh, maybe he will call with me. No, he's not gonna call with me. <laughs> he's gonna start with a Sorceress Blast against that Easterling in front of Armdur. So, I'm gonna use my last one from my store and my free one. I've got it on a... Five. So, how many inches does that guy get pushed back? Gets pushed back five inches, which just means that he's going to hit Amdur and stop. So they're both knocked prone. Which means Amdur is going to take a strength three hit. So I'll do the strength five hit on the Eastling first. No damage. And then a strength three hit on Amdur. He's got one wound, one fate. Three is not enough to kill him. Right, and unyielding combat stance on the four plus I keep my foot. Oh, yes. Yes, and he stays will, standing. This guy will be prone. Here. And he will be yeah. prone there. Wow. Dice next to him. Good job remembering your rule. Yeah. Um, and finally, I'm going to run to the corner. 
Let's just get Sarah Moon today. Cool. Sending models to have a go at Sarah Moon next turn. These are okay, just getting engaged. Just over there. Warpriest could go in. Warpriest is gonna go in, man. Hell yeah, let's see it. I wanna see him take down the captain. <laughs> um, so this guy hadn't moved yet, so I'm gonna move him to there. So the back corner Urukai have all been engaged, but Jim chose to send the archers up the middle of the board rather than towards that back corner because he's probably going to be able to stop the rest of my troops over there anyway, and he needs to start getting models to my edge of the board. He's still got a long way to go, but depending on how long the game goes for, he could definitely do it. And on this side, he chose to engage my two crossbows with one Easterling and send one running. So hopefully I'll be able to slow him down there. And it's just a big grind in the middle here. Pretty much nothing died last turn. So I actually want that to change. I want things to die. If they're mine or Jim's, I don't care. I just want someone to quarter. The rest of Jim's move was just engaging my troops in the middle and that meant it went to my regular move. Jim, I'm gonna get you to do the honors for me. I get two Urukai off the edge of the board. Nice. That feels very good. So that gets me three models off the edge of the board. If Jim doesn't get anyone, I can get seven points for that. But he's got a lot of guys that look like they're going to be trying to break through here. All right, that'll take us into combat. In this fight here, my two Urukai just pushed back the Eastling, but didn't try to kill him. I'll need priority next turn if I want to slow them down, because they're dangerously close to that board edge. And on this side of the board, my captain managed to kill an Easterling, and an Urukai crossbow was taken down. My pike actually won the fight, but failed to kill. And finally, my pikeman was killed, who was trapped. In the combats on this side, Jim decided to start with my banner, and given that he was trapped, my banner has been taken down. I think I'm going to lose a couple more Urukai in here this turn. My Berserker fought against the three Urukai. He used the Berserker Sword ability, which traditionally is looked at as pretty poor, but he actually won the fight, which meant that he got to strike against all three of them, but he just killed one of them. Worth the risk. Over here, we had an Urukai kill an Easterling. And then the Easterling shielded and just pushed back both of my Urukai. Uh, what happened on this one? This was a shield, no one got wounded. Shielded and no one got wounded. All right. So this is the state of our board. You can see that everything is scattered and the Easterlings are pushing for the board edge, but priority went to the Urukai. That's a really big deal because it means that in this corner, I'm able just to charge these Eastlings and tie them up. In this engagement, my objective is just to delay the Easterlings for as long as possible. So I want them just to get tied up. I won't be able to tie all of them up, but I'm going to do my best. Even though I'm ahead on points, if Jim's able to get off the board, he could easily take the lead because there are a lot of models here. Now the game ends at one quarter left alive so if either of us quarter the game will end and I will win so I just need everyone to go all out and either die or kill everything and down in the bottom corner Saruman is just gonna move up to here so he's within 18 inches of the Easterling captain who called a heroic marches turn if I can draw a line of sight there but you'd be able to move somewhere here anyway yeah, I'll head across to there where yeah. I can see him so I've got none left in my store, so I'm just going to roll my three dice. I've got a one, I can re-roll it for Lord of the Astari. And a five, that'll immobilize the Easterling Captain, and he already used his will earlier, yeah. so he's done. And Saruman will just run along as far as he can, but while I'm here, we just need to avoid Armdur coming to get us, so these troops will just charge where we can. I actually had a change of heart with Saruman. I've decided that Saruman is going to move off the board in Reconnoiter. Otherwise, he was just going to get trapped and die. And this way, I'm getting an extra model off the board and possibly denying points for killing my leader. Mm. Jim's move is just engaging my guys down in here. And I'm just ran towards that captain, see if he can get another free my point back. So you just charge the shaman? Just charge the shaman, that's yeah. correct.
And Jim's movement this turn was just pushing forward, what could push forward, uh, and other than that, everything's engaged. It's going to take us into a combat phase, which I'm expecting to be pretty bloody. In this corner, I stabbed and I killed one Easterling, and then the other Easterling shielded and just pushed me back. And my Urukai captain lost the fight, but with defense 7, he didn't take any damage, and then the pikeman who stabbed was unsurprisingly taken down. If three more Urukai die, I will be courted and the game will be over. And in here, my Urukai crossbows both lost their fights and were pushed back, and then my pikeman killed an Easterling. This Berserker fought against the Easterling, and no one died in there. And then the next two fights, we had a Pikeman fight an Easterling and push him back, but failed to kill him. And then we had an Urukai, who was pushed back by the Easterling and did not die. And here we had an Urukai just get pushed back, and the final fight was another Urukai getting pushed back. So, at the moment the Urukai have 11 models that are on the table. If I get down to 8, the game ends and I will have the lead. So that's why Jim has shielded everywhere. He's just trying to keep me alive and I need to die. So Jim won priority and he's just swarming my Urukai captain in the back corner there. Do you want to talk us through your move? Yeah, so basically I've just surrounded this captain, make sure he doesn't get off the board edge, put Umdur up against him. Pinned up these two, I'm bringing the bowmen through to try to get them off the board edge. Basically just pinning everyone here to try and uh, stop them from intercepting my bowmen. Alright, and that takes us into the fight phase. Let's do it, where do you want to start? Um, let's start down here with the captain. Alright, I'm going to fight it, I want to see if I can kill Umdur. So. Two strikes, I'm on a four. It's not great. Armda's attacks. He's got the five. five. Alright, so we have Armda's attacks, which are doubling. Yep. So I'll use defense six, Captain. Uh, defense seven, so you need sixes Shoot. to wound me. Alright, sixes. Um, Nothing yet. I'll leave it for a minute. Yep. And do another roll. Another three strikes. Alright, so I've got one six. One six, so. so that's all I'm doing there. That's correct. Um, but you need him to get the kill for the Blood and Glory. To get the whole kill? Yeah. Right. So, like, he needs to do every move. He needs to do the final blow. Ah, the final blow. Yeah, true, true. So, okay. you can spend the point of might now, and I'll take my fate. Um, or can I spend the point of might later after I roll some of these? Ah, uh, yes, you will be able to. So, I... I will do just this bow and then yep. strikes. Nothing... Spend them both, so I'm 100% dead, but you get one point of might left. Uh, one point of might back from Blood and Glory. Yeah. So that's the captain down. Uh, we had the Easterling push back an Urukai, and the Urukai push back an Easterling. I need to be getting kills here, so it's not what I was after. So we had an Urukai manage to kill a Black Dragon Easterling, and then just pushed back an Easterling. Let's do this Berserker here. So I've got my two attacks. I'm going to two hand. I'm on a three down to a two, so you'll win that. I'll just push back. Alright. We had an Urukai Pikeman get pushed back. An Urukai killed an Easterling. And then two more Urukai were pushed back. And that was the end of the turn. These Easterlings are getting closer to the board edge every turn. Priority for the next turn went to the Easterlings. And they're just tying up Urukai. So how close is he to the edge of the board? He's more than two turns away. More so than it won't two be turns. Turn. Alright, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So at this point in the game, I'm nearly broken, but even when I break, I need to get to 33% left alive to be taking courage test because of the Isengard army bonus. That might end up shooting me in the foot. And Jim is just keeping on running his Easterling Bowman forwards, getting towards that board edge. No surprises from the rest of the Easterling army, just pushing up the board. So, that's movement. Yep. All the Urukai are tied up, so it takes us into the fight phase. I need to somehow lose two Urukai in here. So, let's go for it. Where do you want to start? 
Helps not a bit. Alright, one on one. Shoot it. I'm on a three to your six. six. So I'll just push back. Next one in here. That's a six from me, a six from you. You're a black dragon because that is one of the cataphracts yeah. dismounts. So you got the roll off. Does it go to me or you? Alright. Goes to you. Goes to me. Five to kill him. No, not enough. And these turns are going quickly through here. I managed to kill two Easterlings this turn, but it's not enough, and there's still plenty of Urukai left alive. These turns are going hard and fast now. That goes into priority once again. And Easterlings managed to win it, and they are just sprinting for the edge of the board. Next turn, how many guys are you going to get off? Looks like five, which will take you into the lead. So those Easterlings are running is the question. Yes is the answer. <laughs> Yeah. So Jim tied up a lot of stuff, but I've got these two Urukai free, and I've got two pikes here. Uh, we'll get the trap there, and then he'll just help out Berserker. Hopefully, we can get kills. If we can kill five Easterlings, we'll actually break him, so there's still a chance for us there. These two Urukai are going to stay still, and we're going to put some shots into the Easterlings to hopefully kill one of the models that's trying to get off. So that's my shooting. Do you have anything else to do? No. All right. Two shots, going at this archer who will make it off next turn. One hit, one miss. And that is a crushed dice. And two will not wound. Damn. And in the fighting phase, my Urukai won this fight but failed to kill him with six attacks against him trapped. Then this Easterling Black Dragon here was taken down the, by the Berserker. This Crossbowman fought an Easterling and killed him. And finally, this Easterling just pushed back my two Orikai. Alright, that goes to priority. Importantly, I think this means that Jim is getting all these models off the board. Even though I have a 7-0 lead at the moment, I think it's going to disappear pretty quick. And priority to Jim. That's one, two, five models off the board. So he's now more than me. Meaning that I went from 7-0 in the lead, now he's at 3-0 in the lead. And it looks like that lead might increase next turn. So, even though the Jim has a lot of models close to the edge of the board and he might be able to beat me in points, I'm not going down without a fight. Can you grab that tape measure? No. Okay. Here we go. It's not over till it's over. We're going for the board edge still. <laughs> phase. Jim is going to take some shots from his archers and stay still into my guy who are now going for the board edge. Yep. Two shots here. Going at... Uh, no Nothing. <coughs> That's all. Alright. Now my shooting is these two crossbowmen and they're going to take shots across at uh, these guys in here. Um, they need five to win anyway, so they're just going to go for the two shieldmen. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Both miss. Oh. Our fights were uneventful with an Eastland getting pushed back and an Urukai getting pushed back. So, that goes into priority for next turn once again. Four to Jim's two, so it goes to me this turn. Alright. Urukai's movement is just pushing forwards. We're charging into that archer because otherwise he's just going to charge us. And we're avoiding as many troops as we can. These last two Urukai here have just one of them pushing back because the other is outside charge range, so he'll be able to take a shot with his crossbow. Goes into Jim. And we're in Jim's movement now. Alright, so I've taken another three Easterlings off, which brought my total to eight. So I'm currently doubling Jacob, but I've decided to leave my captain with Bo here, see if I can get some shots off, because right now I want to end the game. Yep, and you just need to kill two or a guy, so it should be pretty achievable. So I'm out of charge range here, but I'm just going to push forward. And that's the end. The guy who didn't move. So Jim's shooting with his captain into my Urukai there. My one Urukai crossbow is just going to fire straight forwards into a black dragon. He'll hit on a four. And he'll kill on a oh, six. Well nice, I'll take that. So yeah, that was a pocket. Yeah. And into the combat phase, we've got a one Eastling fighting two Urukai. Shielding. I've got a five there, it's not bad. Yep, you win it. Snake eyes. Need a five to kill. 
Nice. Snake, Snake eyes. eyes. Nice. All right. And an Easterling versus an Urukai. Yep. I'm on all one. Five. Goes to you. Can you kill me? No. Three is not enough, so I'm just going to push back. And last one, we have two Urukai fighting one Easterling over in the back corner there. Let's see it. Four to, Four to me. Cocked. Three. Three. So, do I get the kill? No, I do not. This game has gone on so many twists and turns. I just want to stay alive now. Jim kills two of mine, the game is over. But I want to stay alive so that my Urukai on that side of the board can get off. That starts with the two Urukai in this corner. They just don't want to fight. So, they're going to run backwards out of charge range to safety. It's not going to last long, but it's something. These Urukai need to charge this Easterling just to tie him up so that he isn't going to get off the board edge. And same with this one. Actually, you know what? This guy is just going to leg it. Hey. Six inches. Put some there. And we're just continuing the journey to the corner of the board. Going to charge. And everyone <laughs> run to the board edge. Alright, so we've really used the whole entire board this game. Those Easterling archers are here to save the day for them and try to stop my Urukai. Yeah. Still got one opportunity to move off the board, so that's all I need. Easterling is just chasing down those two crossbows <laughs> in the corner. Um, this guy's gonna go. All right, so this is the board. It's crazy how spread out so everything's gone. Yeah. In the fight phase, my Urk guy pushed, or were pushed back, and then over here, we actually killed another Easterling. So things are starting to get pretty tense. Let's roll priority. How many more need to leave the board or die for you to be quartered? So I'll be quartered at 10. At 10. All right. Two more need to die. Two more need to die. And to break me is what, 12 plus 8, 20, so you need one more to break me. One more to break. I can do one more. I can do one more. Get some points there. Alright, let's roll priority. Yeah. Two mm. to six. Not what I needed, that's for yeah. sure. These two things engaging the Urukai, which risks them dying and breaking, but it also means that they can kill the Urukai and end the game. So captain's fled the board. Nice. Kills. Makes sense. You need to. And in my move, after the Easterling is pushed around, I can just charge this Easterling. Now this Urukai is too far away from the board edge to make it off, so he's going to stay still and take a shot at this Easterling. And I've got one Pikeman in there who's just going to run along and support a friend. And with everything moved, that takes us to the shooting phase where my Urukai is taking a shot against the Easterling. And he's missed. Oh. Unfortunate. So that goes into combats. Alright. We're trying not to break though. And in the combat phase, my two Urukai were pushed back. Didn't manage to get the kill. In here, the Eastling War Priest. Jim, what happened? The Eastling War Priest just came up and slapped that Urukai with a stave. Oh, and yeah, took him down. Go and on, then, ski. next fight, the Urukai fighting two. I. Oh, fuck. <laughs> The Urukai fighting against two of the Easterlings was also taken down. That means I'm down to eight models, and this is the final turn of the game mm. after so long. Uh, and these are the last few fights. One one. Pikeman fighting the Easterling. Oh. 
both on fours, but you're an archer, so yep. I went on fight value, and a two's not enough. So I need to kill two models to break you, correct? I think it's just one, man. Just we'll, we'll one. Yeah. Alright, could get some points here. We'll save the Berserker. Berserker for last, because that might be the most exciting. That's true. So we'll do this one one. Alright, Pikeman on an archer. It's a you four win. to a two to me. A oh, six God takes him, him down. Alright. But we do need to recount, so nothing certain yet. We've got a Pikeman versus an archer. Five to one. And a yeah, six, I'll take him down. There, I think that's the break. Yeah. Last one, Berserker. I'm on a four, you're on a three, and doesn't take him down. No. All right, well, that's game. Let's count up these models and the score and Oof. see what we ended up with. And at the end of the game, Isengard has gotten four models off. Easterlings have gotten nine models off. That means that Jim is double me. That scores him five points. I've wounded Armda, which gives me an additional point, and we are both broken, so we each get one extra point, leaving it at the final score of 6-2 to two to the Easterlings. Well played, Jim. That was a really intense game. One of my favourites that I played, I reckon. The whole first half, I was convinced that Jacob had the win, and then I just started shielding, started moving my Easterlings up, and after about three hours we finally got over the line so yeah very very good match wow what a game absolutely exceptionally played by jim i really thought i had that one completely in the bag but he managed to pull it out from under me this has been conquest creations thank you for watching